Hello and welcome to another episode of Sabina Reefing. This week we've got Carlos Chacon speaking at the Southern California Marine Aquarium Society. If you don't know who they are, check out the link below to see who they are and what they're about. Maybe come join us on the next meeting. With no further ado, here you are. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. So, hey guys, thank you for having me here at the meeting. It's, um, it's a lot of fun um, in many unexpected ways. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but yes, I just, we wanted to stop by here and talk about the controller and um, I wanted to, you know, we've been working on this controller for three years and we wanted to make it easy. That's what we want. We want to make it easy. As 2021, we don't want to do any coding. Um, uh, there are people out there like even myself that sometimes we find coding a little bit easier and that's it. But at the same time, we wanted to cater to the, to the beginners, to the people that um, don't know how to use it and make it easier. Well, at the same time, allowing advanced people to do some really complicated things without actually having to code. And the frustrating about thing, thing about code is syntax. It's, it's the way you write the code. So anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump in and kind of show you firsthand how easy it is. The control comes with, um, a, we have two controllers. We have the control four and the control two. And the difference between the control four and the control two is the control two has, um, uh, it's more geared to a smaller tank, maybe even sh uh, fresh water. And the control four is geared to a larger tank or uh, a more advanced hobby, somebody that is going to be testing for pH um, uh, and also maybe driving some pumps like ATO pumps, also for a planet tank, just because of that pH. If you can, if you can measure pH in a planet tank, then it makes it a lot easier. But uh, besides that, it's pretty much, it's just an aquarium controller and sometimes we don't like to call it an aquarium controller we kind of want to call it an aquarium assistant because it is here to help us out not to control I'm the controller I just need an assistant you know so we wanted to make it easier and we're going to jump in I'm going to share my screen with you guys hopefully I'm able to do that uh, yes I am all right so I'm going to go right into here and share my screen there you go guys all right can everybody see my screen Thumbs up? Yep. Okay, cool, cool. So this is the Wave Engine, which everybody's uh, familiar with. Um, um, it's, a, it's a platform that takes different fl flow pumps from different brands and puts them together and makes them work together. I think you guys are familiar with it. I'm not going to spend too much time on the Wave Engine because this is not what we're here for. I think everybody's here had uh, some time to work with it. Um, but literally, that's what it is. It just creates different flow patterns from different pumps. Uh, you know, it can drive pumps, it can control pumps, and um, it also even controls the um, Ecotech pumps. But the great thing about this is that if you use a compatible pump like a Reef Octopus, a, a, a gyre, an ice cap gyre, um, you can actually connect the, the pump to the wave engine and have the wave engine control and power it. So instead of having four power supplies to control four pumps, you only have one power supply which controls all, which actually powers all the pumps. And you know, we all know at this time, um, in this hobby today, power supplies are just, they're just everywhere. It's insane how bad they can be. But, all right, so I'm gonna go into what we call our um, main menu, and I'm going to go right to the controller, which is everybody knows this. All right, so here's our controller, and I've even gone a little bit further on this one right here, and even have five different controllers working together as one, you know, all over the place. So I have three, I have four controllers working on my main tank, just because I have a lot of things, and then I have one controller in my ROI station in my garage that is controlling everything there. And they're all controlled through a single interface here. So I add them and all that. So here you can see everything from the internal temperature of the chip to the voltage and the current. Those are the details. Here are my modes, easy access. And this is kind of like uh, starting a feed mode, water change mode. I can pre-program this. Here I have my inputs. And inputs are any type of sensor any type of sensor, meaning binary or analog. Binary, meaning like a leak detector, open, close, open, close. Analog, meaning you have a lot of um, uh, different results, kind of like a pH probe or a temperature probe. So here's what I have. And then I have all my outputs. And outputs are pretty pretty much uh, self-explanatory. It's whatever I get to control. Outlets, you know, drive ports. And here I have my Wi-Fi devices. Um, Wi-Fi devices are pretty, pretty, pretty 
pretty stable. I mean, we have had no problems with them whatsoever. And uh, they're actually quite one of the most, uh, it's just, they're, they're coming to be m very reliable. Now, right off the top, I'm going to say heaters. Yes, there is a lot of people out there, including myself, that probably w does not want to run a heater through a Wi-Fi device. But you know, at the same time, I can tell you that I wouldn't want to run a heater on a wired device without the heater's own controller. Because at the end of the day, Wi-Fi or wired, the outlet is, you know, the relay of uh, close, open, close, open, close, open so much, it's going to fail. It will fail at some point. You know, if a company tells you it's never going to fail, they're just lying to you. It will fail. I mean, let's be honest with it. So what we recommend ourselves is no matter what controller you're using, connect a heater with its own controller thermostat in it. Okay, and just set that heater to about two degrees higher than what you usually have it. So for the most part, the controller is going to take care of the heater. And then if by some reason, whatever controller you're using, uh, it, the, the outlet doesn't work and it's going to keep that heater on, then that heater thermostat is going to take over. Now, can you trust that heater thermostat? The heater thermostat is an arc. And the more you open, close, open, close, open, close, it wears out. If you don't open and close it, then it doesn't wear out and it works most of the time. You know, I can't say 99, 100%, but it will work pretty much uh, most of the time if it's not being used. So if you have the controller shut off the heater before the thermostat kicks in on the control on the heater itself, then that thermostat is never open and closed. So when you need it, it's going to work. So again, Wi-Fi, yes, the heater is probably one of the things that I probably wouldn't, wouldn't, run on a Wi-Fi if I wasn't using a heater with a thermostat. I mean, those, the new things, the, 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 the trend's been for the last few years is to run the, 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 the rod, steel rod with nothing in their heater. And that really opens up the, you know, for some very, very bad things to happen. Anyway, so let me go into here and just create a really quick input. And I'm going to do this because I've had some stuff in here before. So I can go to add new input. I'm going to call it water sensor. <laughs> there you go. All right. And I'm going to hit create. Okay. Now I'm going to select send sport. And then what is it? It's a water sensor. And then where is it located? Now you can see right here. I have. All right. So now I'm going to back in here. Control. You select the control. And like I said, this interface right here tells you exactly all the sense ports available on each controller. I have five controllers in there. These are, these are the sensors that I have, the sense ports that I haven't used. So let me just go to um, um, control two sense port one and hit update changes. Now what that's doing is uploading the change to the cloud and uploading it to every single one of the devices that I have attached to my, um, um, to my, we call it the collective, you know, there you go. And it's all done. And now when I go back right here, I have a new water sensor right here and it says dry. That's how easy it is to attach a, a, a sensor. And uh, we have what we call sense ports. So it doesn't matter what is it. Doesn't matter if it's a float switch, doesn't matter if it's a uh, leak detector, doesn't matter if it's a flow sensor, it goes into the same port. I don't have to purchase uh, a box for a leak detector. I don't have to purchase a separate box for a um, um, for an ATO or a separate box for anything else. They all connect into this universal box, which is IP65 rated. All right. So now that I've let me just I just added that. Now let's go ahead and add an input, which is pretty easy. And I'm going to do this. I'm going to use. I'm going to pick a hard one. Let me let me do call Wasser reactor, Calc reactor, and I'm just going to hit create. Now take a look at this. I have a list of presets right here. So what we've done is we've actually created a list of commonly used items and we've created quote unquote recipes of what the commonly the common settings are for this. And the great thing about it is that if you're a beginner, um, this gives you a great start on how to set something correctly from a skimmer, making sure that the skimmer doesn't start automatically when it when power goes out to uh, maybe, uh, you know, a fluorescent light to make sure that the fluorescent light doesn't turn off and turn on immediately. It has a, a minimum time off, but we've created those kind of recipes. So I'm going to go to call reactor and it's going to ask you the questions pump output device. So what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to grab where I actually connected my pump. Now, I didn't create an outlet called pump. 
I don't. I just grabbed the pump, connected it to the outlet, to the actual Wi-Fi outlet, and now I'm just going to go to right here and select it. Then start time and end time. If I want to run my Cotwasser pump at nighttime when everybody wants to run it instead of during the day, or if you want to run it 24-7, it's right here. Now, pH input. Some people like to monitor their pH, so I'm just going to tank pH. And we already see, set up a, a, a kind of a, uh, an acceptable pH for it. You can change it yourself if you want. Then I'm going to use alkalinity, and I have an alkatronic connected to this. So there it is, and I'm going to change this to... 8, 8, and then I'm going to go to 8.1. And then stir. This is my Cotwasser stir, and I'm just going to go to the Wi-Fi and click OK. That's it. Now, what I want to do is I want to run that stir for 30 seconds every four hours. And that's it. Stir runtime, how long? 30 seconds. Stir run interval, how often? Every four hours. Upload changes. And it is pretty much uploading everything to the cloud. And then every device is pulling it. There you go. And we have it. And I've created a caulk stir and a caulk pump. Now, right now, it's not running because my alkalinity is 8.18. So it's above what I wanted. So it automatically knows to turn it off. But you can see, I've first of all, we've done if time equals, you know, turn on. We've actually done an oscillating because I'm running it every 30, you know, 30 seconds every four hours. I've actually done if pH is greater than, if pH is less than. I've actually done if alkalinity is greater than, if alkalinity is, is less than. All that coding is all done in that simple interface without a single code. And you can choose, you can choose what you want. If you, only, if you don't want to do pH and you do alkalinity, then you do alkalinity only. If you want to do pH and not alkalinity, you don't have to do the alkalinity only. So that's how simple we wanted to create things. That's the simple, that's, that's pretty much what our controller can do, okay? We have different views right here. We have um, tile view and we have also text view for those of you that maybe just want to see it differently or maybe you just want to see the graphs. And we have a graph view right here too as well. Same thing with the outputs. We have outputs and we also have text view so you can actually see a quick scan of the status. You know, and I'm using a web app so you guys can tell that um, uh, you can do this on the phone or on the app, but both web app and um, uh, phone app are exactly the same. Um, also, what I wanted to show you too is we have device properties and at the bottom right here, I have you can save your configuration you can upload your configuration. And the cool thing about it too also is that we have what we call re review archive. And here is versioning. These are all my changes that I've done over the last few days. And I can go back to a particular change right now. If something got screwed up, I can go back into my previous one and load it, save it, and everything is done back to the way it was before. You know, So uh, I can add more devices to it. So this is pretty much our controller in a nutshell. We wanted to keep it simple and, uh, you know, uh, and, and, and complicated at the same, in, but, but do some complicated things. Uh, we also have what we call generics um, um, output. So here, here is a cool one that everybody that is advanced user will like output. I'm going to call this uh, just a test create, and I'm going to create this called a generic output. Now, look at this. I can create a generic output that gives me different inputs, and I can add up to nine different inputs. So if I have, if I want my protein skimmer to shut off when my waste collector is wet, shut off when my sump is high, and shut off when my leak detector is also wet, I can do that. And on top of that, I can actually create a dependency too to make my skimmer depend on my return pump. So if my return pump is off, I can turn the skimmer off as well. So again, we have and and or, so you can actually make it and or. So you can have, if your skim, if your wet, if your waste collector is on, is wet, or if the leak detector is wet, or if the high sump level is wet, then go ahead and shut off the skimmer. 
So you can do ands and ors without a single line of programming. And that's kind of like what we really wanted to do into this interface, bring controlling into the, two, into the 2021 uh, year and use an interface, tiles that everybody's familiar with, regardless of your Android or, or, or iPhone. You know, I know iPhone people don't like Androids. I know Android people don't like iPhones. But the one thing that is in common between the Android and the iPhone is that we use tiles to interface. We are all familiar with it. So that's what we wanted to do. So does anybody have any questions? Or, you know, I'm, I'm happy to answer questions in here. Any concerns you got, please. Uh, you know, I, I want to make sure that everybody gets their questions asked and answered. I think people might have to type them in or something. No? No, they can raise their hand and ask the questions if they want. Okay. All right. Cool. I'm going to stop the share right now. So, I, you know, we've been doing, we've been working this for about three, three years on this controller. And um, 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 it, it's, a, it's, <laughs> trust me, it's, it's, a, it's a love, it's a passion in here. Everybody that has been contributing to this controller, we're trying to make it as easy as possible. How can we do it so that we can, somebody, a newbie can use it. And as you can see, an advanced person can use it as well, you know, with all those ands and ors without having to actually write a code of programming. It's still intuitive. And that's what we wanted to do. It's very reliable. We had a beta tester group for a few months already, and uh, we've actually had a lot of success with them. Have we talked about how much it's going to cost? Yes, yes. So the Control 4 is going to be for, with uh, the Control 4 comes with a pH probe, um, uh, comes with a um, um, quad Wi Fi with four outlets, and then also comes with a single uh, outlet, a little one, and um, um, in the Control 4 temperature. Uh, probe and that price is going to be uh, 449 okay and then the control 2 is going to be uh, 199 for it that doesn't control doesn't that doesn't include includes everything except for the pH probe because there's no way to connect the pH probe okay one of the things that I wanted to, and I forgot to say in this one right, and here, is for those of you that have Alcatronic, you know, the Alcatronic to test the alkalinity, you know, you have to, on the other, on the other controllers, you have to do it via uh, BNC connector, pH probe. With the Hydros, you do it wirelessly, so it doesn't take any of my ports. It automatically goes and, and you log in and give, you log in into the Focustronic app uh, cloud and give your Hydro's device access to it, and it'll pull directly from it, which makes it a lot better because then I can actually use my pH pro, one pH probe for my tank and the other pH probe for my calcium reactor instead of having to get another module for another pH probe so I can put it in my tank. You see what I'm saying? So, um, uh, and the pH probes and the ORP are uh, interchangeable. So you can add many multiple controllers at once. Actually, the more controllers you add to the device, the better, because what happens is when you add a, a, a collective of controllers, then one controller becomes your Wi-Fi master. It grabs onto the Wi-Fi and it provides Wi-Fi to everybody else. But at the same time, if this master falls off of Wi-Fi, any of the other devices that are in here are capable of grabbing that Wi-Fi and becoming the master. And the master is the one that controls the Wi-Fi strips. So if you lose one controller, then somebody else is going to come up and, and connect to Wi-Fi, provide Wi-Fi to everybody, you know, as long as it's present, and then actually take over the controlling of the Wi-Fi strips. So the Wi-Fi strips are not controlled by a single device within your with, within the collective. And if one of the devices goes down, then those Wi-Fi strips connected to that device go down with it. No, they don't. They're all shared and controlled by the master. And then that, you know, you can set up the Wi-Fi priority like myself. All my controllers except for one are in a room where the router is. So they all have the same priority. But then I have a controller that isn't in garage, which is pretty far from the router. I set that priority to the low. So I know that, you know, it'll be, it, all of the first four have to f fall or fail before that one takes over the controlling of the Wi-Fi. So, you know, so that, that just tells you that the more controllers you have, the more reliable, the more connections you have in the, into the, um, to, to pick up that Wi-Fi and, and, and keep going.
Okay. And I, 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 guys, honestly, besides the heater, which I told you what the solution is, which is for every, every controller, you should have that. I mean, your wi your lights can run on a Wi-Fi outlet. They're fine. You know, uh, things like that can run on a Wi-Fi outlet. There's no problem. It's 2021. I mean, for God's sakes, you know, we have, it's 2021. Wi-Fi is a lot more reliable than what everybody else makes you or wants you to think. You know, and the only reason why they want you to think that is probably because they don't have an option for it. But, you know, Wi-Fi is very reliable now um, um, and it should and it should be, you know, it, we should take advantage of it. We all want it. You know, we all look for it. You know, otherwise we wouldn't have Alexa here. I want something to wirelessly tell you something and, you know, tell it and then turn it on. Alexa and Google are coming up in the future. It's something that we're working on. It's not available yet, but it will be. All right. I do have a question. Is that can you run some of some run, can you run some of the devices off the controller like the Wave Engine, meaning less power bricks? Yes. Actually, what we do or what I do is I have my Wave Engine connected at the top, and then I have a data cable and power cable going to the control, to the second control, to the other one, and I just daisy chain them like that. So every controller is being powered by the single brick on my Wave Engine, which is also running two gyres and two Reef Octopus pumps. So I have all those devices on a single power brick. Okay, yes, it will, you know, if it fails, to, yeah, it does happen that, but I have also a backup battery for that. Okay, let's see what sensors will be available for the control four. Okay, so we have temperature, we have water water leak, uh, we have water levels, we also have um, um, uh, let's see uh, flow sensors. We're gonna have some flow sensors. Uh, we also have switches. You know, we have skimmer sensors, and um, I believe. Yeah, that, I mean, that covers a lot of them. I, if I forgot something, I, I, you know, that, please uh, forgive me. We also, the Control 4 and the Control 2 also have what we call drive ports. And what we do is they are 12-volt uh, uh, ports that you can plug in at a small 12-volt pump or a fan or a, or a cabinet light. That little stuff that takes up, that really, it doesn't use that much electricity, but it still takes up a, a space on your power strip, on your outlet strip, we've actually put those um, a drive port, so you can actually plug those in there. Like um, if you use the clear, the clear actually the motors actually you can plug them into the with an adapter. You can plug them into the control four and get rid of the clear power supply, the controller, and then the the control four actually becomes the clear controller. And then you can customize it. And I'm going to show you this real quick. On a, if, if does anybody here have a clear or is familiar with a clear? Some people might be. Let me share the screen real quick again. And uh, I'm going to go to my clear right here. Up, 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 uh, where's the clear? Okay, here's the clear. All right. So here's my clear. And what I did here is the clear, you have different, you, on the clear regular controller, you only have one setting, and that is it. You can't change it. But what I did on mine is I actually changed different things. We have advanced modes, uh, advanced features, advanced settings that you can take advantage of, minimum off time. This is how much the, the, the motor is going to be off before it turns on. You know, here, minimum, maximum off time. I'm going to say 23 hours. If my clear hasn't ran, advance the fleece in 24 hours, then something is wrong. So I get an alarm for that. Maxim, minimum on time. This is the amount of time. This is great for ATOs because it prevents the pump from turning on, turning off, turning on, turning off, turning on, turning off. So if I make the pump run for four, five, five seconds, then it ensures that the pump doesn't stay, doesn't turn off and on often, which it increases the life of the pump tremendously. And then we have maximum on time. So you know, I can't, it, it, there's not, not a possibility of my clear getting stuck on the on position. It'll automatically shut it off. And I've done the same thing with my ATO. And I have an ATO right here that everybody will be able to see here. ATO is the same thing. Look at this. I have mi minimum off time is one minute. So it doesn't turn on and turn off if the water's splashing. 
and then minimum minimum on time is 30 seconds. My sump can handle it, but you can change it to five, 10 seconds. That prevents you. That prevents the pump from turning on and turning off just enough to cover the sensor, and then it goes down and turns on again and so forth. This ensures that it puts enough water in there to give the pump a break, and then maximum on time is two minutes. If it gets stuck, it's only going to be two minutes, and then automatically the control is going to shut it off no matter what. Okay, so you can customize things a lot better than you did before. And on the on the ATO, here is where my my water switch is, and here is where the pump is connected to. All within one screen, instead of multiple outputs, multiple outlets, and then trying to put them together using code. All right. So, uh, see any more questions? Let me stop the let me stop the sharing right here. Okay. So that is the control four. Hopefully you guys, you know, kind of like it. Um, you know, I don't expect everybody to go, obviously to go and buy it. I, I, you know, I just, we just want everybody to be open-minded to it. Take a look at it, see if you like it and see if it makes a life, your life a lot easier. Um, uh, this is developed by, by hobbyists. This is not an engineer that just, we told the engineer how to do it. The engineer himself is a hobbyist. The, the software, for developer himself is a hobbyist. So everything is done by somebody that actually uses it instead of just hiring somebody or outsourcing it and then telling them exactly what to do, but they really don't know the product or they don't know the, the, the you know, the, the use, this usability. Are, are the USB ports on the power strip also controllable? Yes, yes, the, the USBs are controllable. They're controllable as a one. So you have a set of four USB ports and a power strip. They all turn on and then they all turn off. In addition to the plugs, yes. Yes, yes, they do. Yes, they do. They do. So you, you and did it, demo some of the stuff around, you know, being able to control it based on the sensors and the inputs, right? But mm -hmm. for example, if I wanted my skimmer to automatically turn off when my return pump turned off, is that possible? Oh, yeah. Here, let me show you. That's what we call the dependency. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let me share that screen again. And, I'll, and you know, I already have the setting in here. So I'm going to go to my skimmer. Okay. Protein skimmer. Delete. And right here, so here it is, dependency mode. Oh, I have it on. I actually don't have it on my my return pump, but I have it on my uh, a sensor that says the water is too high. So if the water is too high, then I will automatically shut off the skimmer. But I could easily change this to a return pump. Okay. There it is. Also, the skimmer. Here is your. We call it defer, you know, some people call it defer, we call it minimum off time. And what it is, is minimum off time is two minutes. So if it shuts down for power outage, when it comes back, it waits for two minutes. But if your waste collector gets full, then you drain the waste collector, then the switch goes down, the skimmer turns on. It shouldn't have to wait two minutes for that. So that's what we call it the minimum time, not the defer time, okay? Defer and minimum are completely different. Okay, so that's 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 one way of what that's one way of doing it. Any other questions? Oh, we got John with the hand up. Okay, John, come on. John, you better not be showing us any porn. <laughs> Michael, you got him? Yeah. One thing I wanted to point out before. Oh, oh, oh John, no. go ahead, John. Sorry about it. Finally unmuted. Uh, anything with salinity, please? We will have something with salinity, but we're working on that. And the reason why is because we don't want to use a salinity probe. They don't work. Sorry, my lights just turn off. <laughs> you know, we don't want to use a salinity probe because they get interference. There's so much noise. You know, you're expecting this voltage, tiny little voltage to be completely inert from any noise and all that. So what we've done is we're working, we actually have a working model of a salinity a device that will read salinity without being, um, without relying on electricity, I mean the electricity or getting interference. Okay. Yep, yep, that's what we're going to do. Because I mean, how many, how many of you have actually installed a cylinder probe that actually doesn't work? It works like, it works a little bit, but then it's like it just stops working. And that's because of the interference. We are, we, we just don't want to deal with that. So we're, we're actually coming out with something else. Our control, as you can see, based on what has happened over the last 20 years, we wanted to think out of the box. 
you know, I think the difference between we sat down and said, okay, we're going to come up with a controller, but we looked at different controllers that have come up during the years and over the years have come and gone. And we found the commonalities of it. And then based on those commonalities, we said, okay, these are the commonalities. This is what we don't want to do. So let's take a different route. And I think Dave over at uh, Corovia, our, uh, the owner of the company, he was he took the risk and say, you know what, you know, you could go with the way that seems like it works, or you could think outside of the box. And he says, let's think outside of the box, guys. Let's do something completely different. Okay. I I wanted to show you something in here. Um, um uh, not in this thing here. Okay, so here's my wi my Wi-Fi strip, and and something as simple as this, I can actually click on the Wi-Fi strip, and I know exactly what outlets are being used. Okay, sometimes you know, uh, sometimes it's hard to find on on other controllers. It's hard to find where an outlet is, especially if you've renamed the outlet to something else. And then you're trying to figure out because you call the you you call the skimmer outlet, but the skimmer outlet doesn't really tell you where it is unless you look at the unless you look at the address. We said, you know what, we can't, we just can't do that. I've had many times when I'm talking to somebody, and uh, and trying to find the outlet, and then telling them exactly which outlet it is, and they don't know, and we're trying to figure it out. We wanted to just do a, a a quick thing where you have you name your Wi-Fi device, and then. You actually as you actually call the outlets what you got, but in, there's a list in here of what outlet it is. You also have a list of all my inputs right here, and I also have a list of all my outputs in here if I just wanted to see them and quickly access them. But they're also shown, sorry, they're also shown on the status screen, and. Um, Greg and I talked about this, you know, I, I'm, I, you know, we're like, you might not like Apple, but, you know, there's one thing that Steve Jobs used to say, it's like, if it takes more than three steps, it's wrong. So we wanted to be able to make sure that when you clicked on a thing, it took you right to the settings. I didn't have to go somewhere else in order to get to the settings or click on different pages to get to the settings. You know, right here, it's all, it's all quick access into um, the settings so you can change them and, uh, and look at them also. Okay. Hey, Carlos, could you yes, uh, could you touch on uh, your guys' uh, leak detector because it's a little different than what yes. most people are used to. Okay, so I have I have we have actually two leak detectors, and both leak detectors are completely different. Our leak detectors are completely sealed. Um, um, they are not. Um, uh, they're not a PCB board or a board exposed to water with you know exposed weldings in there it's completely sealed so the inner workings of the of the leak detector are 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 sealed another thing that our leak detector can do is it it can also detect RODI water okay you know leak detectors work by conductivity and they, if they if the water is completely clean there's nothing to conduct electricity so you can actually put one of the leak detectors, uh, one of the current leak detectors out there, and put it in RODI water, and you wouldn't, you wouldn't, it wouldn't trigger. Our detector does. But the one that Greg is asking is about our rope leak detector, and our rope leak detector is made from conductive, uh, conductive plastic. And what it is, it's just a, it's just a two plastic wires connected together in, in, a, in a rope or twine together in a rope setting that you can actually grab and put around your tank, all around the tank. And then if any part of that, uh, that rope becomes in contact with water, then it triggers the alarm. Now, for those of you asking, maybe what if I'm changing frags and then um, it tr and, you know, a drop of water, uh, just a little drop gets in there, that's not gonna trigger it. It's gotta be about half an inch of water that the, that the rope has to touch completely in order to trigger. We are thinking of allowing the user to change the sensitivity of the rope. So, you know, for those of you that work in a very wet environment, like you guys in California, humidity and everything, probably the sensitivity would be a little bit higher than somebody in a more drier environment where they don't have to worry about humidity. So we're thinking about adding that sensitivity so you can change it up and down based on what your needs are. Carlos, did you just say we're humid out in California? Aren't you? No. 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 Oh, sorry. You're, you're more humid where you're at. 
<laughs> oh, okay, 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 okay. Well, then it's Carlos, more human. Florida. Carlos, you have you have three more questions in the chat. Oh, I'm sorry. That. Thank you very much. Let me go ahead and yeah. stop the share here. I'm gonna go to the questions right here. Okay, what it says. Okay, uh, what does it change? What does it take to take change the Wi-Fi? Okay, that's actually quite easy to do. Let me show you this, guys. And I'm gonna go back and sharing. Okay, so let's say I need to change a Wi-Fi. So here, look at this. I just hit replace. So then it asked me to go through the process of connecting the new Wi-Fi strip. And then it pulls it in, the new Wi-Fi strip, and it will assign the same names and the same outlets to the whole to the new Wi-Fi strip and then render the old one completely out of the system. So you can replace it quickly and easily. Now if you wanted to change the Wi-Fi uh, if you change your Wi-Fi completely password, you go to replace and it'll go through the same process and you're just adding the, you're adding the same Wi-Fi, you're adding the same Wi-Fi strip again, but changing the Wi-Fi name and it's done. I think that was more, if we changed a router inside of our house, how do we get <laughs> access to this console when it's web-based? Because it's got Bluetooth access as well. Ah, there, there you go. Yes, there, yeah, it has Bluetooth access as well. Bluetooth X as well, but just full full transparency. If you're if you have Wi-Fi strips, you're going to have to switch those. Once you switch the controller to Bluetooth, then you're going to have to go through every Wi-Fi and run the setup process again to make sure that your Wi-Fi outlet connects to your new Wi-Fi router. But if you are if you if you if you know if you have a young guy or somebody there, all you can do, all you do is when you change your router, just call it this. You just just the Wi-Fi name, make it the same exact name and same password, and you don't have to worry about it. It'll pick it up, which is what I tell people to do. You know, that's what I do. It's just just change the change the default name to whatever you had before, the the, the same the default password to whatever it was before, and then your devices would not know the difference. Okay, let me go back in there and Carlos, I can I can just read them to you if you want. No, I, that's okay. Is there a yeah. tutorial on YouTube? Are they are are they for dummies? Yes, we will have that. And I actually we do have a set of instructions and let me share the screen right here again. I'm gonna go into I'm gonna go to coralviewhydros.com and I'm just gonna take this out right here and just show you. Uh, get started and then Hydra's control and here look at that so and those are all the videos well those are instructions by the time We're by the time the yes and we will start at we will add videos like the wave engine the wave engine instructions they all have each each page has a video we will do the same thing with this we will have images and videos on how to do it um, you know, but the beta testers, I can tell you from our beta testing group, I gave them this part right here. I gave them this part right here, how to connect the controller to the, to the, um, um, to the Wi-Fi. And I, on purpose, I left out this and all this. And I wanted to see how they did. And I can tell you, all of them were able to add the sensors and the inputs pretty damn easily without any, because you saw it was, there's no coding. Everything is pretty much intuitive. It walks you through the process. It asks you the right questions, you know, it tells you what to do. So, I mean, you know, all you have to do sometimes is just ask the right questions to get, you know, to get somebody to actually do it correctly instead of just taking them around in a loop, okay? So that is one way of doing it. Is the power outlets UL L rated? We are working on that. We will, they are ETL but we're working on the UL. Um, and then do you have any IT dummies for beta testers? <laughs> yes, we do. We have both. We did that on purpose. Actually, most, most of our beta testers are not computer savvy for that reason. For that reason, because we wanted them to, we wanted them to be able to do it this way, you know, easily without, without having to walk them, which, you know, it's, uh, it, it, it actually was very nice to to at first for 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 some time we're like are they installing it we're not installing it we're not you know and then all of a sudden it's like we start looking at the logs and it's like yeah they're installing it they were working we thought they were not installing it until we looked at the logs because we were not getting any questions you know which is which is kind of which is kind of great all right any other questions all right looks looks great uh, Carlos, I, I, you know, I can't thank you enough 
uh, for coming on and, and, and showing us the Hydros. Um, you know, I've been really excited about it just simply from, for the fact that I know there's a lot of people out there, especially members of our club, who are intimidated by a product. You know, some of the higher, higher, uh, or let me not say higher end, but, you know, just Other products. more complex yeah. uh, controllers out there uh, that can, you know, they, they're so powerful, they can do so much, but that's not within their technical abilities. So, mm -hmm. so to have something else that's that's more intuitive that and and you know the fact that you send it to people without instructions on purpose <laughs> you know and they still were able to figure it out that's that's priceless yeah yeah i know you know we've had we have a um it ha also has zero to ten input um, um and if i may i can i can share a little bit of that right here um, let me go back in here. I think this is where it is. Okay, here it is. You know, um, I know a lot of people ask for the input output box, and the input output box is 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 zero to ten. I'll give you I'll give you an example of what we have with zero to ten here. Um, let's see. Uh, here, I have a sensor. This is a magnet sensor that is connected to my door. It's one of those magnetic sensors that you can actually like a, like a like a home like a house alarm. And the door you open the door and the magnet splits and all that. That's what it is. We connect it to a zero to ten volt input, and that's how you control. That's how the sensor triggers. I have the range of the sensor because those sensors by default um, um, they they when they're when they're when they're closed, they go to 2.5 volts. When they're open, they go to zero volts. And we have this preset. So now when you open the door in the sensor, it triggers the sensor. And then remember on some of the controllers, you have open switch, it's open close. And sometimes it doesn't make any sense. We have on and off close open generic leak detector water level, whatever you wanted to make it. If, if it's a, if it's a door, I'm going to make it open and close. If it's a switch, I'm going to make it on and off. It means the same thing, but visually, when you're looking at the status, you know, I don't want to see switch one is closed when I meet, when I'm trying to look for a, for, for a, for a uh, leak detect, uh, for a, um, a, a, a float switch that's supposed to tell me if it's wet or dry. Does that make sense? You try to figure it out. So we wanted to do that. Plus, you shouldn't have to buy another module to, per, to, to do an input output box. It's all already into the controller built. The controller itself has a, an, a zero to 10 volt input with four channels and a zero to 10 volt output with four channels. So that little that controller box already has the input output box already integrated into it. Okay. You know, we also have input. We have also a switch button. So if you wanted, so, so if you wanted to create a button, you can create a button in there. And we even set it to the way that um, um, here, when you create the button, zero to 10, the voltage change. And here's the cool thing about it. If you press the button, you can set it. So 15 minutes from now, whatever it started, it deactivates. Or you can set it on the second press, which we have right here, is to do something else. So I can say restart the event or end the event. So I press the button once, it starts the event. I press the button again, it ends the event. You see what I'm saying? So I can press the button and say feed, and then if I don't press it again, it runs out after 10 minutes. But if I'm done feeding the fish in 10 minutes and I have to leave the house, I just press the button again and that automatically ends the event. You know, those are the little things that we have been able to do with this. Um, uh, here is a uh, switch float. This is the float switch, so water level. You know, if it's if it's up, it's it's wet. If it's down, it's dry. And we have here an analog, so you can connect a, a, a like a TDS meter, and the TDS meter sends different signals, it, it sends different voltage, and you can actually make the voltage, uh, multiply the voltage by uh, by by ten. So then, if you get one volt, that means ten. If you get two volts, that means twenty. So you get twenty TDS, ten TDS. If you get one point five volts, that's fifteen TDS. So that's for the more. This is again. This is for the more advanced user, the do-it-yourself user out there. This is not for a beginner, but this is something that we've implemented um, uh, into the system to make it easier for that advanced user that really wants to, you know, take that controller to a different level. And this is far more zero to ten than 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 other controllers out there have been have been able to do.
Okay. Awesome. Carlos, how does that connection look to the control box? And is it like a dongle that comes out of there with some wires that you connect to it from the switches? Yes. So the, all the connections in the control have what we use. We use a, um, a GX12 connector. Um, and then from the GX12 connector, you get a cable that comes out and then the cable, then, then the four, the four different channels split and the four different channels have a 3.5 millimeter jack in them. So instead of having to have a screwdriver with two wires, you have a 3.5 millimeter, like your, like your headset stereo. And then you get the switch with the other side has a, the 3.5 millimeter female, and then just, just plug them together. Like you do your iPhone or your headset and it works and that's it. You're done. And you can switch them, everything. I mean, it's quick, easy, and out instead of having to take the wires, unscrew them, and find the two wires again and so forth. You can, if you want, we're going to sell the exposed wires, you know, the, the, the bloody ends, as they call them. And then you can, you can if, you, if you have a more advanced system or if you like to have, a, a, an, you're like an electrician or something likes to have that box, you can do that. But other, other than that, you can just, uh, you can just use the 3.5 millimeter jacks, which is way simpler than having to use bloody ends. Okay. All right, guys. I hope you're enjoying this video. Please, if you're interested in joining SCMAS, please click the link below and check us out. Is there any USB-C ports? No. USB-C ports are great for computers, but they're not good for an environment where there's a lot of water. You know? It doesn't. So all our controllers have what we call a GX12 connector, which is waterproof. So um, uh, there are, uh, that the only way to keep that IP65 rating is to keep that, uh, that, that GX12 connector in there. We do not use USB. You know, USB is just, it gets salt, it gets rusted. You know, uh, GX12s are, they, they don't. That's why we don't use. Um, can you do anything with calcium reactors? Yes, I can. Let me show you this. I'm going to go back in here and do this for you guys here. So I have a calcium reactor right here. And uh, here is my calcium reactor. And I'm going to add it right here. So pick up the calcium reactor. It asks me for the pH of the calcium reactor, then the range. So already preset. Then I can actually include my, if I, if I have an alkalinity monitor, I can put the alkalinity monitor and tell it when to shut off the calcium reactor. Then here's the location of my CO2 solenoid. It's, it's, I, I can tell it directly. I don't, want it, I don't have to create an outlet called CO2. I can just go directly to the outlet itself, the Wi-Fi, just tell it, okay, go to Wi-Fi outlet, Wi-Fi strip one, outlet two, and then there. And then we have active mode. So you can turn this on feeding, normal, or water change if you wanted to. And then depends on my, my, my calcium reactor is fed by my manifold. So if my manifold pump is off, I want my calcium reactor to turn off. I also have advanced settings. If input unavailable, this means if the, if the, if the calcium reactor loses any of the inputs, if it loses the pH probe or a water sensor or something, what happens to the calcium reactor, leave it on. And then turn on the calcium reactor for turn up minimum off time is two minutes. And that's because I don't want my CO2 regulator to turn on and off, on and off, on and off, on and off, because that destroys the CO2 regulator. So you can set it. I set it to two minutes. Somebody else can set it to 30 seconds. You know, you can also have minimum off time. So if your calcium reactor hasn't turned on in four or five hours or in a day, then you can have it sound an alarm or send you a text and, you know, minimum on time and maximum on time. So that's how easy the calcium reactor is. I don't have to create, uh, you don't have to have, have to create an outlet with the, with the pump and then put pH, alkalinity, defer, you know, if the, if the, you know, and all this other stuff that needs, that you need to know how to do, it's all asked in one location right here. And if I don't select the pH, I don't see the range. If I don't select alkalinity, I don't see the range. So it only shows up if I'm using it. But I try to use the, I'm, I'm trying to show you a, a complicated one where I'm using everything so you can see it can still very easy and very intuitive to be able to set up. Okay, let me go ahead and any other, uh, let's see. I have a question, one of you guys. Go for it, John. Uh, can, you hear, can you guys hear me? Yep. Yes. Perfect. Carlos, um, question. I, I, I need a control like ASAP uh, for one of my, clam systems and um, my, 
I'm ready to go Apex again because I've been, I'm so used to it. This mm -hmm. seems like it's an amazing product. It looks like you can do so much more with ease. My only concern is, I know the salinity you said maybe coming up later on, and you said you can switch the ORP instead of the pH. Can I do pH and ORP? Yeah, uh, the yeah, yeah. The, the both B and C ports on the Control 4 are both, B, uh, are both ORP or pH, whatever you want. I can, uh, and or. And, no, they're or. Or. Oh. So if you, you can plug in a pH or you can plug an ORP. It doesn't matter. On the controller, you tell it what it is. So here, let me show you real quick just for your easiness. So um, let me go back in here. And I'm going to grab, let's see, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to create a new input. And I'm going to just call it test, guys, for simple. Here, I'm going to call it a probe. And then here, probe mode. So depending on what I connect to it, I can select. If I connected a pH, I just say pH. If I connected an ORP, I say ORP. If I connected the uh, alkalinity, like you have a KHG instead of an alkatronic that has to go to the pH port, then I connect it right here. If I select the alkalinity, then in the front end, instead of, so, instead of showing the pH, and then you, you have to interpret and remember that it's alkalinity, it will automatically change the label. But that, John, that's how easy it is. So depending on what probe you pour, you plug into the outlet itself then you just choose on the software how to read it yeah so it sounds like it's very easy to switch back and forth but i, I kind of mm -hmm. want to have orp important for me because i travel a lot and when i'm gone yeah. maybe 10 15 days i have a lot of like stock um and if my orp goes below you know from 410 to mm -hmm. like 380 i know that something's dying and then also like I need to know the pH because pH is so like so important for my clans then, at the same time. You know, like I need to know all these data. Right. So then you then what you can do is you can use one of the BNC one for pH and BNC two for ORP, or you can use BNC one for ORP or and BNC two for for pH. Or if you want, you can use uh, the one controller's B, uh, uh, two pH, one for your calcium reactor, one for your tank, and then add a okay. second control four, and then make that ORP. So you can add uh, as many as you want. Oh, here. So. That's what I said. I have a, you know, and I, I'm sorry. And the more, and the, you know, here's my, here's one control four. And here a second control four I have installed on the same system. Okay. So both controllers. So what I can do here is, and I'm going to go back in here and show you add input. I'm going to call it test again. Sorry, guys. Yeah. And then here probe. I'm going to make it probe on use. I'm going to make it pH and here. Yeah. Here it tells me control control four number two pH yeah. port one control. If I had uh, uh, the other two are being used in, in the control in the in the first control four or control four A and control four B, the two and control A are already being used, so I can't select them. So that the only two that I have free are control four two or B. Okay. Okay. You see. Okay. So, yeah. So you treat. They, even though they're all different, they're all different individual devices. Once you add them to what we call the collective, the hydros net, then it all becomes one individual thing. And it just, you get, when you're choosing the location, you just choose the name of the control. I could have, I could have called this control A and control B. You see what I'm saying? And I would have just gone to drop down and select where the pH port, did I connect the pH port, the pH probe to control A or did I connect it to control B? You just drop it. You'll see everything into the screen. Okay. That makes sense? Yeah, yeah. I, I, okay. my, my concern is monitoring everything from afar, too. But, um, yeah, and yeah. You, is a big deal later on. So you, are, are you guys, is that you guys just going to avoid salinity or maybe? One no, no, we're not, we're not avoiding salinity. We're going to, we're going to, we're actually going to, you, we're, we're coming out with it. On the okay. pH, here is the safe, uh, you, we have safe range low and safe range high. So okay. if the pH goes below 7.6, then I get an alarm. If it goes yeah. above 8.4, I get an alarm. <laughs> Okay, good. That's how easy it is. Okay? Okay, thank you. Good. All right, let me see here. Uh, stop share. Let's see. I have it right here. It says, um, yeah, as long as it doesn't burn the house down, I'm, I'm, I'm game for that one. Is there a calibration section for the probes? Does it have a graph function? Yes. Yes, it does. Um, uh, the calibration, I think everybody saw the calibration for the probes. Um, but let me go back in here. pH probe right here. It gives you the calibration. Okay. Oh, nice. I have to. I'm using an old probe, so you can see the 
yellow means the probe probably should be changed. Red means you should definitely change the probe. And if you have it as, 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 as green, that means the probe is actually pretty good because it's pretty close to the actual value. Because the probes, as they get older, they start to degrade and they start to shift away from the actual value. So the more the shift, the more you know that you have to change the probe. So that's how you calibrate the probes. Um, uh, and the other question was, um, sorry. And the other question was uh, graph function. Yes, the graph function is, is actually here. And I'm going to go right here into inputs. I'm going to change it to graph. And here are your graphs. And I can have my right there. pH calcium reactor. I changed my pH. I, I, my calcium reactor was empty. So I actually had to change that. And that's why it showed the, the hike in there. So. Um, um, that's 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 where the graphs are and you can make that graph or you can actually go back to um showing it as a as a tile all right that's how you do it um let's say can you use a, a mac with this new system yes the web it's a web app which means there's a browser app you can as long as you have any browser safari chrome Internet Explorer and you go to the website, you'll be able to access it or you can access it from a native app, which is Android or iPhone. And uh, the Apple of control is, yes, yes, um, uh, Omar, yes, that's exactly what we wanted to do. We, we, we looked at, at the end of the day, guys, you know, we looked at Apple and, and the way they do things so easily, you know, that they're known for simplicity. So, um, 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 uh, we're like, you know what, we, we should, you know, there should be an aquarium controller that, that, that takes this, that takes the cue from that and make it as easy as possible. And I'm glad that we are, that we we're taking this route instead of the coding route, which is what the, the route that most of the controllers that, that have been around and no longer here have taken that route. And you can see that they last a couple of years and then they're gone. You know, if you make them too complicated, you know, only a very small percentage of people will buy them and the bigger percentage of newbies won't buy them. And unfortunately, you can't pay the bills only with 20 percent. You got to sell it to the 80 percent. You know, oh, Carlos, the, there's a question from sure. earlier. Uh, it says, how many Wi-Fi outlets can you have? You can have up to Wi-Fi devices. Wi-Fi devices. So each device could have four outlets or it could be a single Wi-Fi outlet. It's a Wi-Fi connection. So you can have up to eight of them, <coughs> up to eight of them. So you could have eight times four max. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it says when it's available. Yes, it will be available for sale to the public on uh, Halloween, October 31st. October 31st. That's when it is. Did I miss any other questions? Um, explain how your UL listing is different, better from it. No, um, UL listing is not better or not. You either get UL listing, which means that you are, you pass the certification. It's like saying, it's like, you know, it's like saying, is there, you know, uh, which certified Per, you know, what certified technician is better. Technically, they all should be the same because they've all passed the test. They've all been certified. So a UL is a, is a set of criteria. It's like passing code uh, for houses. You have to meet that criteria in the way you create an out, a, a Wi-Fi strip and then you submit it. And if it meets all the criteria, then it becomes UL certified. If it doesn't meet the criteria, it doesn't UL certified. So there's no levels of UL or no, you know, it's like I'm half UL or, you know, you're AUL instead of UL. It's, it's going to be, it's a certification that you get from the government, the United States, from the United States government. Um, uh, and you have to meet that criteria. Same thing as the code. You got to pass, you, you're building a house, you got to pass the code. It's got to be approved by the code, by code or it's not. That's pretty much it. So Carlos, I may have missed it. Are you guys UL certified? We are working on that. Okay. We're working. It is, you know, the, the, the units, are, the, the, the devices are, UL, are made to pass code, but the UL certification takes, takes a while. Yeah. Takes a while. Takes a while. Okay. Yeah. Either, yes, yes, Omar, you are either you are or you are not. Exactly. Exactly. You know, there's that little gray area where it says the same thing as patent pending. You know, you haven't gotten the patent, but it's under submission to get it. You right. know, exactly. Okay. Any other questions, guys? No. Ah, uh, that's it. Any specific power head, power power heads for the system oh. that can be controlled? Okay. So, um, 
uh, one thing that I want to clarify, and this is a great, excellent question, actually, is, is the the control doesn't do uh, the control is only turns on and off. Okay, so it turns the things on and it turns the things off. If you want to be able to use flow patterns, then you use the wave engine, which is part of the hydro's world. So the wave engine does not replace the control. The control does not replace the wave engine. The wave engine is a is a box that is specialized on flow pattern. The control is a more general thing that can turn things off. So the control will be able to tell the wave engine run this pattern, but the wave engine itself is the one that is going to execute the pattern. It's the one with the coding for executing the pattern. So yes, if you wanted to turn on a pump and turn it off, you plug it to the outlet and cut the power or give it power and it turns it on and off. But if you wanted to go like something like they call it the, the reef something mode or the SPS mode or something, those modes, those presets are on the wave engine itself. Okay. So we've created the spe specialized app because it's a lot easier to keep it. Both the wave engine and the control use the same app. So then it's, it's intuitive. You don't have to learn a new system again and you don't have to plot anything else. But can you talk about what brand of pumps work with that? Yeah, the Wave Engine runs with um, the runs with the Reef Octopus, runs with the Maxpec Gyre, runs with the IceCap Gyre, runs with the um, um, the uh, pa -pa 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 -pa, the Ecotech pumps. Now, Maxpec, IceCap, and Reef Octopus, it will power them and it will control them. Ecotech, it'll control them because they're wireless. And then we also, if any pump out there has zero to 10 input, like Tunsi, Tunsi has a zero to 10 input on the controller, then you can put it on the wave engine and it'll control it as well. It won't power it. Um, the only pump I know that doesn't, I mean, the, the only pumps I know that don't have zero to 10 input are the Nero pumps, because they don't have it. So Nero AI has made it so that, that nobody can control their pumps except for themselves. And I know that also Panaray doesn't have zero to 10 input. So their big controller doesn't have a way to connect it. So the, the, the manufacturer in fact is saying, no, we don't want anybody else controlling the pump except for, for us. Um, uh, Abyss has zero to 10 input. So you can control Abyss through zero to 10 input. And, and zero to guys, for you guys for those, have able to do that. Yes, yes, yes. Oh yeah, uh, we had actually we had it at uh we had it at uh at one of the Riva Paloozas in Orlando. We had Is the big it tower. Four dollars. What the zero to ten input the cable. Yeah, well, yeah, because it's a bis cable and it's a little bis box. I know that Abyss is working on a new <laughs> controller to make it different. Okay. We we can only we can only go by what the Wave Engine can only can only connect to the pump if the manufacturer allows it to happen. Yeah. We don't want to void your warranty. So, you know, I'm not saying cut the cut the wires on a Nero and make it work because that will void your warranty. I just so it's a cheaper way of doing it. <laughs> yeah. 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 I know. I know. I know. But it no, it's the zero to ten input. That's the that's the that's the that so is you're saying uh, it's possible. Yes, it is possible. If we just cut the wires. I don't know. <laughs> I, honestly, we have never we have never tried it. You know, we we know what we're so busy doing our own things that we don't want it. We we're not going to spend time on something that that is never going to happen because it's just it's just not. If you're an engineer and you're an electrical engineer, you probably will be able to figure it out yourself and uh, put a do it yourself out there with disclosure. How about the web pumps? Highly doubt it. Highly doubt it. No. Okay. Uh, just just so you know. Uh... Yvonne, um, I know we hear a lot about certain companies not working with other companies. Well, that company who always accuses certain companies of not working with other companies, their products don't work with other companies' products either. So what's good for yeah. the is good for the gander. Yeah. Like I said, unfortunately, unless, unless the manufacturer says, yes, you can do this, we can. So we are at the mercy of the manufacturer. Um, uh, we are trying to work with uh, with other companies out there, but you know, in addition to the hardware, you also have to take into consideration the. I hate to say it. Lawyers get involved. Warranties get involved. So exactly. So you so you might have a pump that works perfectly well with the hardware, but the manufacturer will 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 void the warranty if you're using a different 
controller other than theirs. And we don't want to put you in that position. So in order for us to make a pump that works with the wave engine in, in terms of power and controllability, we have to go to the manufacturer and make sure that the manufacturer um, honors the warranty even when we are, uh, when they're connecting it to our device. You know, you know, that's, that's what it is. All right, so uh, worked less, okay, last night. Yeah, no, Jay, you're good, man. You're good, yeah. <laughs> How much was the control two again? Control two was 199. 199 okay 199 199 that's the that's the easy we have all the products down the pipeline but we have been um uh, unfortunately i can't share what we have because we have to keep it very uh, we have to keep it secret otherwise we're giving competition heads up on things so but we have other things down the pipeline that are coming out very 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 soon that i actually have on this system behind me which is turned off um uh, and, and you guys are going to be pretty impressed and they're going to be pretty happy and uh <coughs> And I think I think you guys like it. That's all I can say right now. I wish I could say more, but I I have to protect our our, our IP or at least, you know, not give anybody heads up on certain things. Absolutely. Show us a teaser. Say it again. Show us a teaser shot. Yeah, no, I can't. Unfortunately, I can't. I can't. I wish I could, but I can't. <laughs> good try, Michael. Yeah, good try. Point point to point to your tank where the thing is installed. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, they're going to be, well, it's completely dark, so it doesn't matter, but it's inside the stand. So that's, that, let me put it that way. It's inside the stand. <laughs> so, so the difference between the, the two, you said the two didn't have the pH pro or something? And then the, Correct. And the, the, okay. So, so the, the control two has mm -hmm. two sense ports. So two inputs, two, yeah. two things that can give you uh, data, like a water sensor, leak sensor, whatever you want to connect to it, whatever you think you want on your, your controller, that is what you connect. The, okay. the, the, the ports are universal. And okay. it has two drive ports, two, two, two 12-volt ports. So if you have a small tank for your, you know, like you have a kid and the kid has a small freshwater tank and all you need okay. is a little, all you need is a little, a little pump for your ATO, then you connect there without a power supply. Uh, it doesn't have a pH or an ORP port, but okay. it can control, but it can control up to eight Wi-Fi strips and everything too. So that's the big difference between the, it's still a good deal. You know, Oh yeah, if you have a if you have a freshwater fish or a small reef tank where you're starting, then go with the control two. And then when you evolve, then you get a control four, put them together, and now you have six sense. Now you have uh, what is it? Yes, you have six sense ports. You have four drive ports. You have two pH probes. You have one in four in four zero to ten input channels, four zero to ten output channels. Because now you put them together and they become one entity. So what would you, I mean, your guys' price is a lot cheaper than um, Apex's, um, uh, the, you know, the package that, that they have is like 700 or 800, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you say is the difference between your product and Apex's product? Um, a good, bad, whatever, or Well, difference? you know what, yeah, I'm, I'm just, you know, I, you know, we, we, we want it to be simple. Yeah. That's the that's the big ticket. We want it to be simple. We want it to be able to be used. We want it to bring it to the to the twenty twenty first you know the twenty first century, which means Wi Fi outlets and all that. Ours is ours is IP rated IP sixty five, so you can you can actually grab a hose and spray the controller, and nothing will ha and nothing will happen to it. Wow. It'll be fine. You can drop it. You, you you can't drop it in water, but you can spray it. So that's those amazing. are the things. So those are the things that we wanted to do. So you're a clam. You're a farmer. There's a yeah. lot of humidity you yeah. splash things a lot yeah. you know oh. so the so 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 that con so the controller will be able to withstand that environment better than something that is not ip65 rated and and also if we want to because we need a, a controller in tahiti but the problem is that uh, it's different voltage does is that does yours work was it uh 210 or whatever the different voltage over there versus her <laughs> Yes, the power supply. We use a uh, if you if you were to use a brick like the Wave Engine, who yeah. uses a regular a, a regular brick, a DC brick, and the DC brick can take both 110 and can take 220. The only thing you're gonna have to do is change the power cable that connects directly to the outlet. Make okay. Sense? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. That's it. Okay. That's well, it. That's it. The Wi-Fi the Wi-Fi strips are 110, but we will have 220 as well. <laughs> okay. Wonderful. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Let's see. So it, this is made to work with Alcatronic if you want to measure alkalinity. Yes, Matt, uh, it does. Let me go back and sh share my screen real quick in here and just show you. Here is my 
alkalinity, which is connected to my alkatronic. And it's done Wi-Fi. It's done wireless. It's not an actual physical BNC co uh, uh, cable, PH Pro of cable going from the Alcatronic to my control. So, and you know, those cables are pretty short. No, my Alcatronic is on one side of the tank and you know, the controller is on a nice board, panel board, because you got to keep the Alcatronic close to the tank within a meter of the, of the water source. So no, it is completely Wi-Fi. My control, the, the Hydro's control connects to the Alcatronic's cloud, pulls the data, and then brings it down. You can even, I mean, you can even have it so that we have a setting called um, stale reading. So if anybody has an Alcatronic here and has experience when you run out of reagent and the Alcatronic switches into a code zero one and then nothing happens, nothing changes, the reading doesn't change, it just says 8.1 even though it was 8.1 this morning and we're already at 10 p.m. Um, um, or you know my time here. Um, uh, so what it is is you can set it to a stale reading so if I have a frequency of my electronic uh, test every four hours I can set the stale reading to two and a half times. So if after 10 hours my reading hasn't changed then I get an alarm to tell me that my Alcatronic, there's something wrong with my Alcatronic. I don't know exactly what it is, but I get an alarm telling me, hey, go and check your Alcatronic. There's probably something going on. Maybe you have to change the reagent or something happened, you know? So we have those things which you can't do with other controllers. Come on, Carlos. Maybe your tank's just incredibly stable. Yeah, I don't think that's the case. <laughs> I wish it was. You know, it always cracks me up when, when, when people say, I keep my tank at eight. And it's like, that physically impossible. Your, alka your alkalinity will swing up and down through the entire day. So keeping it at eight is, unless you're testing almost every every minute or every five minutes, it's pretty hard to do. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So let me go ahead and stop the share right here again. Oh, Mindstream, you were, you were so close. Uh, can you set what the alarms say on like the APEC? Yes, yes, the alarms will tell you exactly what the error is. So it'll say pH and then it'll tell you the value. So that, that is one thing that you can do. Um, you can set different levels of alarms. We have three, in the alarm system, we actually created it in a way that is uh, very intuitive. We have, um, we, have um, uh, what is it? we have yellow, orange, and red. So you can set your yellow alarms to only send you an email. You can set the orange alarms to send you an email and a text message. And you can set the red alarms by default. It sends you an email, a text message, and it sounds an alarm. The alarm goes on. So then when you go to the outlet and you say notification, you can select the severity of the notification. So if my, you know, obviously if my temperature falls, you know, below, below the level, then I want it to be red. But you know what, if my pH goes above 8.1 and it goes to 8.2, maybe I just want it to be yellow. Just send me an email, don't go crazy. So again, we try to do it. And the way we, we thought about it is the severity is TSA. Everybody travels here. Everybody knows, you know, the levels of severity for TSA, orange, I mean, yellow, orange, and red. So we figure, why don't we use that? Everybody is already has a pre, pre, predisposed knowledge and implied knowledge of what yellow, orange, and red means. So why can't we use that on the controller? So we turn around and do that. So that's how you set your alarms. Hey, you hey know? Carlos, I got a mm -hmm. quick question for you. So yes. I was at a friend's house today and he was talking about his Apex uh, sending messages. Mm -hmm. Does your, when, when your sends text messages, does it send them using the same phone number? Or yes, a yes. Phone number every no, time? no, it's going to be the same exact number. So you can go into your contacts and assign that number as your Hydros controller. And then whenever you get it and glance at it, it'll say Hydros controller. So it's the same phone number every single time, not a random one. Yeah, because his controller, he was saying, you know, it'll, if he gets like a bunch of tech, a bunch of messages about his, you know, warnings and so forth, he said they'll all be from different numbers. And then he, he spends like hours trying to clear them out of his text messages. So. Yeah, no, they're, they're the same number. I know, I know that uh, iOS 14 has made it so that you can actually have uh, unknown callers, all caller, you know, on all callers and then filter out unknown callers. So all you need to do is once you get that first message, 
add it to your contacts and it'll be that same phone number every single time. That's awesome. I'll let them know. Yeah, it'll be the same phone number. Red alarms notify the authorities. Yeah, you know what? The red alarm will sound off and it'll notify your wife. And that is the authority. <laughs> 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 yes, yes. So, yeah, the, any any other questions, guys? I, I, you know what? I, I love this. I love that you guys have, uh, have a lot of questions. This is what I want. I want to make sure that everybody gets the questions and make your decision. You know, just have an open mind to it. I know everybody's been you know, 20, 20 plus years of the same, the same controller, it's hard sometimes to get out of that mindset. Um, um, and I just want everybody to have an option. Let me put it that way. And, and you know, Greg and everybody and, and, you know, the board of the club has done that, you know, bringing in somebody like myself and just giving you an option. If you don't want to take it and you want to go with a 20 year old controller, that's fine with us. You know, hey, you know, it's, it's, it's your choice, but you have an option. Up until now, the options have been pretty limited and not and they don't last that long. CoralView is the biggest distributor in the country. We've been around for many, many years. We're not talking about, uh, uh, you know, somebody running a controller out of their garage and then that's it. No, we are backed up by CoralView. And you got to remember, CoralView does, we also, we distribute MaxSpec, we distribute Reef Octopus, we distribute Easy Reefs, we distribute uh, BIS, we distribute Aquaforest. So we have all those brands that help us. Our, our source of income is not just the controller. It's a lot of products that come in there. So we have the financial backing to, to stick around. Okay. That says, can your controller control Kessels and AI Prime HD lights? I think the, the, we're working with Kessel to get us to, uh, to be able to do the Wi-Fi. Um, uh, but if you have an, a, an older Kessel with a 0 to 10 2 channel, then you'll be able to do it through the, through the um, 0 to 10 lights because it actually controls zero to 10 lights as well. Okay. And it I says problem. I will say guys, you know, when it comes to lights, a lot of these companies have their own proprietary software. And I personally don't see a need for a controller to control those lights. Um, it's not like the old days of metal halide where you want to turn them off because the tank's getting too hot. LEDs don't get hot. So, mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's not, it's, it's, it's not the same uh, reasons why you would need to control them. So uh, it's just, le it's just less parts you have to buy for your controller. If you stick to controlling the other things, other than the things that already have their built in controllers. Right. We also, we also have this um, zero to 10, which actually it's pretty cool. And I don't, I mean, here, uh, let me show you this. So I'm gonna create, I think it's, yes, I'm gonna create an output and I'm gonna call it test. It seems, seems like test outputs, outputs gets, uh, and everybody guys, this app that I'm showing you right here, this is not a dummy app. This is actually running my system. This is running my system and I can make all those changes. As long as I don't hit this upload changes, nothing will upload to the controller. I can, I can change the rounds, look at things, move things around. And then when I'm ready, I'll go ahead and upload the changes. I don't have to do all, you know, I have to do one at a time, but um, um, here we go. Variable light, variable light mode, slope, parabola or latitude, slope, start time, end time and the slope. That slope is the, the we call the ramp up. So you want your lights to ramp up from zero to a hundred and you know from nine to nine thirty. That's a half an hour. And then from nine thirty till ten thirty PM run them at max and then slope for half an hour. That's all you need to do right here. And it's all set. Minimum level, maximum level. If you want to do a parabola that's a little bit different. That's going to be a parabola. It's going to be like a sign. Everybody knows a sine wave. It's a perfect round up and a round down. That's what it is. So the so the so the so the light will the controller will automatically compute the right slope and down. And then we have what we call the latitude, which actually is kind of cool. And this one right here lets you set the latitude of the location in the world. So you can actually say Hawaii or you can say the Solomon Islands and then it'll keep the sun. And then what we have right here also is once you select the lent, the minimum, the lent, we also have what it's called the 
uh, zenith. And the zenith is how high the sun is, the angle, the altitude of the sun, the, the, the altitude of the sun as it moves around the horizon. So it's actually, pretty, you know, this is also obviously more intricate. And this is for somebody that's trying, this is more for a, um, uh, probably like a, like a, like a, um, um, a public aquarium. They're trying to get things to spawn or corals to, you know, trigger some kind of spawning or something. Then you get a little more intricate about this where you set the lighting to match that part of the world, even even with the the angle of the sun, so that tells you the exposure of the sun and how long how long the sun is actually visible compared to um, um, cause sunrise and sunset don't really mean um, uh, when you see the sun. Sunrise and sunset is when you start seeing the light and not, because that has to do with the zenith. Um, and zenith is not just the television. If you look it up, zenith is actually has to do with the sun, the position of the sun in relation to the horizon. Okay, so we have that in there, which is a little more complicated. So those are more complicated things for the more advanced user. Otherwise, we just have simple things like um, uh, LED lights. We have fluorescent lights, metal halides. Those are recipes. LED lights can turn on and off all the time, it's no problem. Fluorescent lights, we have it set so they can only turn on and off when they've been out for two, you know, minimum off time is two minutes. Metal halides, you can't turn them on and off all the time. You have to have a minimum time of about five minutes or 10 minutes. So instead of you as a newbie trying to figure out this, it's like, you know, the light goes, you know, the electricity goes down and comes right back up. And why is my metal halide not turning on or something like that? Then, uh, or why did my metal halide burnt out? We're trying to make it easy with this preset recipes. They're not set in stone, but they're the recipes of the most commonly used settings that we've, that we've you know, learned over the years to try to help the newbies so they don't have to learn this the hard way. Okay. All right, let's see. If there, if there are reverb back to change or like my controller broke and I buy a new one, would like to be able to, oh yes, actually yes. So here, let me show you this real quick. We have this. So let me go back in here. I'm going to go to the device properties and then I'm going to go to download config. And when I download the config, it actually creates a JSON file. If you're a, if you're a tech guy or an IT guy, you know exactly what a JSON file is, but that's pretty much everything. All your settings are there on the JSON file. Then I can create, recreate the collective, add my devices in no particular order, no particular order, recreate the JSON file and it's there. Why? Because the devices are marked via their MAC address. So I can restore the, uh, you know, I don't have to restore everything in the same exact order to get the right address number for that device. I can just restore them. And if you don't want to do that, as I, sh I think I showed this before, we have the review archive versions. The server, which we use Amazon Web Servers, keeps a copy of your changes. Look at this. So I can go back. 16, we're going to add more. Uh, I can add, add more. We, we've done a lot of change. I've done a lot of changes today for this. But here, if I wanted to go back earlier today, like at 12 o'clock, I can just say load. It loads the settings back to 12 o'clock, upload them to the, to the controller. It uploads them to the controller, and I'm back to the way it was back uh, today at 12, 10, the, you know, instead of right now. You know, so instead of having, instead of having, so I could, I can upload all those changes that I've done. And then when I get off the phone call with you guys, I just go back to this one on 2139, load it, and it has deleted all the changes that I've done and put the, put it back the way it was back at nine o'clock, 939 my time. So you see, we're trying to, you know, this is all by all done by hobbyists. We we know you know we've been around. We're hobbyists that've been around for 20 years, and we know what we want. We know what we don't have right now, and we like sitting down and doing it. One thing we want to say is that, you know, this is it's a it's it's a work in progress. You know, we try to make it that on October 31st, everything that we could think is there, but but there's some things that are not going to be there right off the top. But you know. We are just starting this. You know, um, other companies have had a 20, 20 year head start on us. That means 20 years of experience and trying to make this thing work. And then we can't, uh, and, and, and it's unreasonable for, 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 for to, to, to assume that we're gonna go from zero and catch up to them right away. We're trying to, and some things are gonna come there. If you ask the beta testers and you know, some of the beta testers are out playing around, they, even the beta testers, have direct control to the developer, 
to so they they can report the errors to the developer and the developer changes it and and makes the and makes the changes and then sends them updates you know tidbits of code and all that so because the the developer works for us full time it's not like we have to go and outsource it to europe or asia and wait for them to make the changes overnight so they're so they're done this morning and you know if we have an issue we fix it right away and then we sh we push that update um when you do update firmwares, we have device properties. Let me go to update a firmware. You can actually look at this. So this one is the running firmware right now. This is the firmware on the backup hard drive. The, the, the controller comes with two partitions. If you're an IT person, it's two partitions. One is the active partition and one is the old partition. So we can revert back to the old partition without having to reinstall the operating system awesome. or the, the without without reselling here you can download the new one or and this one changes automatically if we push a update top public but if let's say you had an issue you report it to us and then you know the developer says okay just go to select experimental type in this special firmware for you select and it'll automatically download that firmware for the server that fixes your problem so that you can have that fix and then we'll implement that fix on the major firmware and then you'll catch up again but the thing about it is that our devices that way so you have two partitions if you if I, right now i'm running on one on firmware 157 if 157 is really bad and something happens i can easily just go back to 156 by clicking install and it'll automatically revert back to 156 yep. you know so the to the previous firmware um you can download the firmwares and then you can install them later so that's what we recommend instead of having to download and install to my control for and then everything else and so all I can do is I can download them all first and then I can go ahead and install them you know Carlos so, yeah. what is uh, what does your support look like and, and kind of the reason I ask is is I had mm -hmm. an issue with one of your competitors products right and and mm -hmm. obviously we have a lot of critical equipment running through um, our controllers and mm -hmm. I actually had a hardware issue right and, and the only way that I can get a replacement was to get expedited shipping and, and they wanted to um, have me send my device back first before they would send me a new device, right? And it just kind of turned into okay. a huge hassle. I'll give you, I'll give you an example with us. Um, um, uh, I don't know if anybody, I know somebody here had an issue with a controller. Our policy with, uh, with the wave, current Wave Engine and the IceCap controller is if you have a hardware issue, I will send you a prepaid shipping label to send the reply that replies the the, the 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 unit back but at the same time i'll send you a new unit perfect okay yeah i'll send you a new unit and most of the times we send the new units next day awesome. so we send that out today you'll get it tomorrow obviously you know if if, if it happens at five o'clock then obviously it's physically impossible to do it but that's what we've been doing for the for for this we understand as a new product and we're trying to keep it that way i you know i i i don't foresee us changing that policy um if we do we'll let you know but right now if anybody has an issue with the wave engine or has an issue with the ic2 with the ic2c we we'll call it that's the short for ic2c for us um the ice cap controller then um uh, we send you the prepay label you send it back to Wait, us the so same day it goes out so you're saying for now is, is that going to be a policy going forward or yeah that's that okay. no that's going to be it's going to be a policy for the control as well as okay. the control as well but we and just just to be just can be transparent we have to troubleshoot first sure we have to i have to troubleshoot it with you if you if you if you email me says my control doesn't work send me a new one I'm not, I, I'm, I have to get on the, okay, 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 man. Try. Let's, right. yeah, I have to, to try, try fixing shooting. it. Yeah. yeah, we have to try fixing it. Um, uh, we also have, um, um, uh, you know, on, I can actually, with your permission, I can access your controller remotely. Yeah. Very with cool. your permission, I can access your controller remotely from the same app so i've seen everything that you've seen i can poke around and look at look at what it is and then i if you if you want me to i can fix it for you or if you don't want me to i can tell you exactly what you, you what 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 needs to change email to you and then you make those changes beautiful yeah yeah so it's a lot easier for me to do that yeah. okay well, I, right. I can tell you there, there wasn't even an option where you know it was either i buy a new one they overnight it to me 
or I have to send my old one back and wait for them to give, you know, either fix it and send it back to me or determine if it was fixable or not. There wasn't an option for them to send me a mm. new one while my old one was being put no. into repair. No, 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 no. It will will send you a new one on that one. Um, um, obviously, as long as it's under warranty, of course. How long is the warranty? Uh, we're thinking it's going to be one or two years. We haven't figured that out yet. We're gonna we're gonna release that. We're gonna release that soon. Um, uh, but we're not hard asses about it. You know, if your warranty is, you know, if you're expired, we'll give you a little grace period. If you can't, if you contact me one or two months after the warranty expires, that's not gonna be a problem. If you contact me a year after the warranty expires, that's a different story. You know, right. at the end of the day, we're still a company. We're yeah. still a company. Do the power bars suffer from the apex unit syndrome that some of the outputs go out and then you have to go through a lot of them to get to, to, to get them going? No, um, um, we don't. And that's, that, I think that that's answered by what I just, we just talked about it. If one of your outlets, if one of your Wi-Fi outlets is out, something is going on with them, I'll troubleshoot, which is very easy to troubleshoot. And if, um, if it works, then we'll fix it. If it doesn't work, you'll send it back to us. And at the same time, I'll send you a new one, you know, and we make it easier. You can just replace it, you know. We we have we have software here too that allows me to that allows you to um uh, like for inputs you have wet and dry but the inputs in order to do wet and dry in the back end it's a voltage either you you shoot a voltage up and it tells you it's wet and it shoots a, and the voltage goes to a different voltage if it's dry so we have a, an input called diagnostics that we can actually select you can select and you can see the voltage go up and down so you'll be able to tell if the actual sensor is working or not by the voltage you know so you might be seeing the sensor it's not triggering an output what's going on switch it over to diagnostics and then if you get it wet the voltage goes up if you get it dry the voltage goes down that tells you that the sensor is working and it could be something else so we have we've done this many ways of doing it also the controllers have a magnetic reset and i know some people have asked that question where not here but how do you reset the controller because it's it's a, you know is there a button and there's no button actually the controller has no button because uh, it has to be IP65. So there's a particular spot on the controller and you can see it through the support. You grab a magnet and come on, we are all fish tanks. We all have magnets. That's one thing we have galore. You grab a magnet, put the magnet on that particular location and then you can reset the controller. And even the number of resets, you will never be able to break. We have a reset that only undoes the last change that you've done to the controller. We have a reset that wipes your Wi-Fi, so you can reset the Wi-Fi. We have a reset that wipes your firmware to the previous firmware, and we have a different reset that actually takes your uh, controller and wipes it out completely. So depending on what you might have as an issue, we could, my wife, uh, we, you, we, I could tell you, you know what, let's just do a Wi-Fi reset to reset the Wi-Fi, or I could say, you know what, you've made, you know, probably it was the last change you've made. Let's just do a green reset, which erases the last, it's like an undo button. It erases the last changes and then it gets you back to where it is in case you can't access the controller through, you know, through Bluetooth or something like that. You know, so you, there is no way for you to break that controller. If worse comes to worse, you reset the controller back to factory, you know, con connect to it, go to your JSON file, upload it, save it and you're back you're back in there you're back to you're back to normal back to the way it should be all right so we've taken a lot of precautions to make sure that you are that you're able to that we're able to fix the problem remotely instead of you having to send the unit in okay <laughs> apex <Pixel. laughs> yes yes any more questions guys these are great questions. I love it. I mean, this is this is this is a lot of fun. I I, I like it. I, this is this is great, guys. I, I love that you guys are engaged. I told you we had some knowledgeable people here. Yeah, you do, you do, you do, <laughs> you do, you do, and it's fun. I'm I'm trying to, I'm 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 hoping that for the advanced users, this is something that you're like, oh, that's kind of cool. Oh, you know what? Ah, ah, that I like it. And for the newbies, it's like, oh my god, I, I, that's what I want. I mean, just yeah. just just kind of get that appetite going, or at least get get the. Um, you know, get those creative juices and say, oh, you know, I can do this with, you know, that's, that's what we want, you know? Yeah, I, think, exactly. I think most people in the end, they want reliability. Yes. And, and you know, they, they want to feel like they got a product uh, that will, will stand the test of time. 
and and be reliable for them because that yeah. that's more important than anything and as yeah. and as long as okay. it does that uh you, you already got a leg up on on a lot of the competition so yeah i mean you know like i said before just rehashing on this one it's coralview biggest in biggest distributor company in the country so we in terms of fish the fish gear for us so we are not we're not a company that just started and uh you know um uh, we have a company with muscle um uh, as well so we can't we 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 also don't uh we're we're big enough that we're not going to be you know um you know um uh you know pushed aside let me put it that way did you guys buy the the ip from mindstream Mindstream? No. Okay. Because Please if you were evasive with that answer, then I would have known you're lying. <laughs> oh, no. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. All right, so we know it wasn't Coral View. Darn it. <laughs> yeah, no, no, we it did was. not. No, we did not. Um, uh, you know, sometimes I think any of the IT people will tell you, sometimes it's a lot easier to start from scratch than to take somebody else's product. No. And take and and and, and 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 do it. Sometimes it is. Um, um, Does that mean you're coming out with the tester? With the well, they they, mar they market the Alcatronic. Yeah, we do the Alcatronic, the Alcatronic as well, and the Mastertronic is coming. It, it will be coming soon. Um, um, that which also tests magnesium nitrates and a couple of other things. It's done by Focustronic, which is the same company that does the the Alcatronic. All right. All right. Anybody else got any questions for Carlos before we let him go? No. All right, Carlos. All right, guys. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much for coming on, man. It, it was awesome. I know it's late for you over there. Don't worry about uh, it. But yeah, thank you for coming on. Uh, those of you guys, you know, we we normally continue to stay on for a little while, at least another hour or so. Uh, just this is shit. So. Um, Thank you again for coming on. If you want to stay on with us, great. If you don't, uh, you know, no yeah. problem. But uh, if you have any questions, guys, if you have any questions, guys, just feel free to email me, carlos at coralview.com. Or, you know, if you forget the email address, just just send those questions to Greg. Um, uh, and Greg will get a hold of me and, 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 and send them to me. Yeah, so please feel free. Um, uh, I wish I could stay around and talk to you guys, but it's already – 11 o'clock here and my wife is yeah. probably going oh, like, no hey, what are you doing? <laughs> no sir, and, and don't worry, we're going to edit out all those technical difficulties. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't worry about it. <laughs> that was, hey, you know what? It was, it was interesting. <laughs> it was fun. Yeah. I'm not going to forget that. So, yeah, that was a good video. <laughs> all right, guys. Just, um, Thank you so much. You have to have fun and uh, thanks, be Carlos. safe, all right? Thank much you. Peace, Carlos. Carlos. Thanks, Thank buddy. you, guys. Bye. Thank you for watching. And please click the link at the bottom to join SCMAS. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you like the video, click the like and subscribe. It helps me Adam, out. Adam, get out of my house.